Brilliant. Okay. Go to here. Okay. So, what we're going to learn today is how you can start your own soap business with confidence and ease. It doesn't have to be stressful. It doesn't have to be super difficult. It's absolutely something that you can do if you want to. So what are we going to cover today? Well, we're going to look at six core skills or core buckets, if you like, that you're going to need to build a successful business or soap brand. And although I'm talking a lot about soap brands today, I don't want you to feel that you're excluded if maybe you're doing a body care brand or a beauty brand or even a candle brand, because all of these core steps and, and fundamentals still apply to you. It's exactly the same. So when I think about this, if, if you wanted to go on a journey, you would never just get up one morning and decide that you're going to go on a journey and walk out the door and set off. You'd always want to have some kind of destination in mind, but that's not what happens the most of the time that I find anyway, when people start a soap business. That's exactly what they do is they just decide that they're gonna have this soap business and they set off that's my cat <laughs> joining in. <laughs> and they set off on a path without any clear vision about their business. And it really, really messes things up for them long term. And what ends up happening is they get locked in the fun of making soap. I mean, come on, who doesn't love making soap? I know I certainly do. It's the most fun thing is creating all of the designs, testing out all of the recipes and all of these really fun, beautiful things. And that is great. And I would not want anybody to feel that they couldn't have that fun. That's what probably made you want to have a business. But it's one element of it. Because if you end up spending ages just producing this gigantic soap mountain, you're going to end up spending an absolute fortune. You're going to have a ton of products that have no cohesiveness to them when it comes to your business. And you're going to end up giving it away to everybody. <laughs> you're going to have enough soap to last you an entire lifetime, let's be honest. And then you decide that you're going to go for your assessments, you're going to do all of the things, but none of those things then work for your business. So sometimes you need to do a little bit of planning first. If you really know that you want to have a business, whether it's a soap business or something else, that in that immediate planning, that first step is absolutely huge. And the first thing I like to think of is, why do you want your own business? And, and some people skip this and they just, I, I want a business. But without knowing why you want your business, you've got no real way of determining whether you've reached your goal. You've got nothing to drive you forward and push you to where you want to be. And it's so, so easy without that key step for you to start off at a million miles an hour and then just fizzle out. And that's not going to give you a sustainable business. So think about how your life will be when you achieve that goal. What do you want your business to look like? How will it change your life? What will improve? What things might you have to give up to get that dream? It's not always a positive thing. Some things might have to go, but there are positives in other ways. And write down how you'll feel and what it would mean to you when you've achieved those goals. Because hanging on to that as you're building your business and times get tough will really, really help you through things. Now, once you've done that, you need to think about what type of business you want. So again, we're not setting off a million miles an hour. We're thinking, well, OK, I, I, I'd like to explore this. I'd like to think about starting a business. But what's going to work for me? 
how much time do you have to give to your business? Is this something that's going to be full time for you or is it a part time thing? Is it something that you're doing evenings and weekends as a secondary income? And goodness knows, with all of the cost of inflation and other things going on in our lives, that's a real possibility for a lot of people. Just knowing that they can have something to earn a little bit of extra money to help the finances in the family. It's a huge thing right now. Maybe you've got family commitments or care commitments and you don't necessarily have the ability to work full time on it. And then you also have to think about whether or not you're going to be doing this in person. You're going to be doing events some of the time, part of the time or absolutely not at all. Is it going to be 100 percent online with no face to face interaction at all? Now, that's not for everybody because some people really, really love interacting with people, networking with people, meeting people. If you were semi-retired, actually being able to go out and see people and meet people, that's just as important as anything else. And doing some local events can really boost your business. So I would never personally rule out doing some face-to-face -face selling. So who is your customer and why, why would they be attracted to your business? What's important to them? And when you think about this, you have to think about the types of products that they're drawn to. Well, we know that everybody needs soap up. <laughs> we would hope the majority of the people would use soap. <laughs> Certainly if we're going to be around them, it's a kind of a nice thing to, <laughs> to have people use. <laughs> but we all know when we go shopping for clothes or shoes or bags or whatever it is, we don't all go to the exact same store. We don't all buy the same things. We don't buy at the same price point. We can buy a pair of jeans for five pounds. So why do some people pay 500? It's still a pair of jeans, it's still made out of denim. And the reality is, People like different things, different brands, different styles, and people's perceptions of price points vary hugely. So once you've determined all of those types of things, we come on to the six core elements in your business. And I like to start with the target market. Now, I know some people kind of like to skip over this. But you really, really can't. If you're going to do one thing in your business, you have to start with your target market. If you try and build a soap brand or any type of brand by trying to be everything to everybody, you are going to get absolutely nowhere. You'll just be another company. You'll have no face. You'll have no connection. You'll have no personality that people can link to. It's just a brand that happens to sell soap. And there'll be nothing that distinguishes you from tons of other companies. And that isn't going to give you growth. It's not going to allow you to thrive. It's not going to leave you with a profitable business long term. So I like to think of understanding who your customer is, your target market, as literally the building blocks, the foundations of your entire business. And until you nail this, there is no point doing anything else in your business because you're just building a business on quicksand. And you could have put years into building up your business only for the whole thing to collapse down again. And that's a little bit pointless. So your target market is literally the foundations of your business. Now, in the business program, we use proven psychology methods to determine your target market. And it makes it so much easier. It's literally a five, 10 minute quiz that you go through. And it really, really helps you in a visual way rather than me kind of saying to, you, well, what's the name of your, of your customer avatar and how many children do they have and what kind of car do they drive? I mean, I've never, I've never met anybody yet who actually understands all of that rubbish trying to nail it down to someone called Sharon, who's got 2.3 children and, and shops in Next. It, it doesn't happen because you can't really visualize that. But when you go through this quiz, it's going to give you a very, very specific group. 
And those groups split across a wide range of, well, all of the people. Um, and there are areas that overlap between them. But when you target your business in that road, in that pathway, the people who see that identify with it quite clearly. They know that you are talking exactly the same language as them. They get you. And that's what you want for your business. You want everything in your brand to be tied to that specific group of people. That doesn't mean that other people aren't going to enjoy your products, but it means that a set group of people that you have chosen and targeted will immediately know that their beliefs, their ideals, the things they love in life are right in front of them in your brand. And that makes your life so much easier. Now, the second element is the product itself. It may be soap, it could be something completely different, but you can't work out what product you want until you know who you're actually making it for. It's like throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping it sticks and goes to the right person. So it's really, really important that you know who the person is and then what product is going to match that particular person. So this comes down to all sorts of things. What are the right ingredients? What's the perfect recipe? What special benefits are there? Is there going to be environmental elements built into your business? What are your ethics? What's the mission of your brand? And all of these add up to a picture that people can understand and identify. They know who you are and what you stand for. And until you understand all of that, you can't work out what shape the bar is going to be. Do you need tall, skinny bars? Do you need square bars? Do you need circular bars? Do you need cylinders? You're not going to know any of that until you know all of the first bits. So it's literally building blocks, this roadmap, putting all of the pieces of the puzzle together one step at a time. And if you try and do things out of order in your business, you'll, you, you can absolutely get there. It's just going to take you much, much longer, cost you far, far more and give you an awful lot more headaches. So the size of the bar, the shape of the bar and also your molds. I've had so many people over the years who've rushed out and bought all of these molds and then realized it doesn't make the bar size that they need. It doesn't fit the packaging style that they've chosen later on. And now they've got to go out and buy all of the molds again. And when you're doing it for business, you're not talking about one mold. So now that's a huge additional cost being added on because the work wasn't done in the right order. Don't forget, you can pop questions into the chat. I can't see them at the moment, but I promise you I will. I will. <laughs> So the third thing in my six core items is cost and pricing. And, you know, this is more important than ever right now with rising costs and uncertainty in pricing for different ingredients. You really, really cannot just guess. You can't just pluck a figure out of thin air and think that that's going to work. And you certainly can't just copy somebody else because that's the price that they're charging. So therefore it must be okay for you. It's really important that you know your exact costs, that you have a proper pricing structure. And I think at the moment, it's absolutely crucial that you build in a safety buffer to help with unexpected costs. And if you do all of these things in the right way, you're going to allow yourself room to grow and thrive as a business. If you just guess and pluck figures out of thin air, you could end up working for absolutely nothing and then start to actually resent your business because you're not earning the money that you deserve. So we need to think about the cost of materials. We need to look at all of your manufacturing costs, your wage or wages for other people, other costs, and there are many, many different things involved in that. So it's important that you take the time and really map out every element. But then you also need to work out not just your costs, but your pricing structure. So you need to work out 
what is the minimum amount that you would be able to charge for your wholesale price? Now, I'm not telling you to rush out and make it the minimum amount, but you absolutely need to know what your bottom, bottom, excuse me, line is. Because if you started liaising with somebody who wanted to wholesale product from you, and then they started pushing you further and further after you've given them the price. The temptation is there. You're like, oh, this is brilliant. It's a wholesale customer. I don't want to let them down. This is a great opportunity for me. But the reality is, if you're going under your minimum price, you're working for nothing. Well, we can all do that. We can all kill ourselves and work for nothing. You can get a job and do that. That's not why you normally start your own business. You start your own business because you want to be in control of things and being in control of the price is just as important. Once you know that, you can also work out your retail price and you also need to come up with bundles and offers. And that's both for your retail customers as well as your wholesale customers. The fourth in the six elements is packaging and visual branding. And you'll notice a lot of people want to rush in and they want to get all of the packaging ordered, pick their designs, whatever they're doing, hire graphic designers on huge amounts of money, get their logos designed by some expert. Well, that's all wonderful. But until you've got all of the basics down, <laughs> you can't do that. You can't rush out and get a logo if you don't know who your target market is. You can't rush out and get packaging until you know what kind of bar and size and shape and all of the other things that are going to come into it. So it's important that you do all of the elements step by step. And if you think about your branding and your packaging, people buy with their eyes more so now than ever because so many people are now buying online so they can't pick it up and smell it they're relying on what they see and when people instantly see your product the first thing is vision it's what they see with their eyes if they're attracted to your product they may go on and pick the product up and smell it which brings in those additional sensory elements and if their expectation of that scent and product meets their expectations, then they'll purchase the product. But the first thing is still that visual impact. So it's important that your products look beautiful, that they're displayed beautifully. You want them to literally be drooling over your products, whether that's online or whether that's in person. It's a key element and I know that most makers, and I, I will say most makers, and I hate to say this because I want to say that they do it brilliantly. And I know some people absolutely nail it, but I would say that the majority of makers, certainly when they first start out, get this so, so wrong. And it ends up looking really, really amateur. And then they don't end up getting the value in their product. They have sometimes the most beautiful products. I see their products, I, I use their products, I test their products and the products are gorgeous, but the packaging and the look of the products is sometimes absolutely dreadful. And it really, really does let them down. And it can ultimately cost you in sales and growth in your business. So you can end up really disheartened because you're not getting the sales that you want. And a lot of it comes down to the fact that your packaging and the look of your brand just isn't targeted at your target market. So number five, still on branding, because there's lots of different elements to branding, but also copy text. Well, I know that very few of us are skilled or confident at writing. But it's a huge, huge element of our business. In the chat, let me know, is writing all of your product descriptions, is that something that you'd feel really, really comfortable doing? Do you feel confident that you could write copy text that really engages your customers and makes them think, I need to buy that product? That's exactly what I need. That sounds perfect for me. 
because visual branding is one element but when we're talking about online then we can only back that up with the emotion and the story and those other elements from words they don't have the other sensory elements so we have to build those in <clears throat> and you have to remember that people don't buy products people buy emotions they buy stories they buy engagement and they buy things like your mission or your ethics so there are lots of different elements that make up why people buy from you but it's not about the product they can buy soap anywhere they can buy a candle anywhere why would they choose to buy from you So do you know what your unique selling point is? Do you know what makes your product special? Do you know how to engage with your customers and get that message across? The sixth one in the core ones is sales and promotion. You can't sell a product if you don't tell anyone about it. Let's be real. <laughs> oh, this one kills me. I see this all the time. I see people who make beautiful products. I mean, I mean, gorgeous. Some of them make better products than I do. And they can't sell product. And why can't they sell their product? Because they haven't told anybody that they even make it. They've got a house full of product and absolutely nobody knows that they're doing it. Well, I don't want to tell anybody. Oh, I don't want the neighbors knowing. It's not even just neighbors and it's not even work colleagues. It's even family. I don't want anyone to know what I'm doing. Well, you're in a business. Can you imagine opening a bakery and not telling anybody that you're doing bakery? You're just gonna have all of these products sitting there and nothing happening with them. I recently had somebody contact me. They, I can't, I, I won't name names. I will never name names, but I, I was heartbroken for them. I was absolutely heartbroken because their idea for their business was brilliant, but they'd rushed out, had tons of products contract manufactured, hired a factory space or a warehousing space to house pallets and pallets and pallets of all of these products and haven't been able to sell very much they've tried a few bits and pieces on social media and it takes time to build social media it just doesn't happen overnight you can't post three posts and expect to suddenly sell hundreds or thousands of pounds it doesn't happen like that you have to build an audience, you have to build a following, you have to network with people, you have to build your trust with your customers. They have no idea who you are. And all of that takes time. So to rush out and get a warehouse and all of these products made. And now the products are going to get to their expiry point, they're going to hit the point where they are no longer useful. So they only have a small period of time to sell pallets and pallets and pallets of product. Now, I know that all of you don't have warehouses with pallets of product and expect me to fix it overnight. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> but these things happen because people are not following core steps in their business it's so easy to get excited and, and think oh yes and rush out and do something but take the time to do the steps one thing at a time don't try and do packaging before you know who you're selling to don't try and get on social media and be telling them about your holidays and telling them about you know the salmon fish cakes that you've eaten today when you're actually selling soap it's okay to give a little bit of a glimpse behind the scenes and connect with people, but you're selling your whole business. 
talk about the ingredients, talk about how they can be used, engage with people, just be you and have a conversation. It's not just about selling, 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 selling. You're trying to build a connection, a real trustworthy connection with people. And you know, we need people to have conversations. It's so lacking these days. So just be honest, be truthful, and be you. You don't need to be anything else, and it doesn't need to be scary. So get social and get social early on when you're first starting out in business, not when you launch, because if you literally put two posts up as you launch, no one has a clue what you've been doing. No one understands what you've just gone through, putting all of the bits and pieces together. If you start at the beginning, people can feel and build their way into your business. They can, you can actually utilize run polls, get feedback on the names that you're thinking of giving the products. Ask them, would you buy this or would you buy this? Do you like this packaging or this packaging? Show them that you're producing the labels. Get them involved at every stage of your business with these little behind the scenes snippets and they are gonna feel so much more connected. Be real about some of the struggles that you're going through as you're doing it. You know, some of these people would love to have a business of their own, but they're just never going to be able to break out from that. And they want to be like you. They want to champion what you're doing and they want to support you. So get them on board, include them and build that engagement, network with them and really build a real audience and a community. And that doesn't mean that you have to drive yourself nuts doing like all of the things. I mean, there's so many different social media platforms. You'd go insane trying to do all of them. So think about where you like to hang out, because on every single social media platform, there will be an audience for you. It doesn't matter which one you go to. There is an entire audience just for your products on every single one of them. So if you like being on Facebook, start on Facebook. If you live your life on Instagram, do it on Instagram. If you can't stop scrolling and looking at TikToks and you're up till one o'clock every morning TikToking, get yourself on TikTok. But you don't need to do all of the things. Just choose one platform that you like, because if you like it, you're more likely to actually go on there and post and be consistent, be engaging and build up that following. That's the same. <laughs> All right. So I want you to think, what could you do? What are you doing at the moment even for social media? If you're already doing some social media, be absolutely honest with yourself. How often are you posting? How interesting are the things that you're posting? Would you be interested in it? If that you've got less than three seconds to grab people's attention. If you were scrolling and you saw the post that you put up, would you stop and be completely honest with yourself and think, how can I make what I'm doing a little bit more interesting? How could I post more often? Every time you make product, take some photos, take a little 15 minute video clip that you can use for stories or as a reel. It doesn't take a lot of extra time but it really, really will help to build your social media. Okay, so some of you may well be feeling quite overwhelmed already just with the amount of things that have to be done. And I barely touched the surface. I've given you headings, not all of the things within those headings. So there is a lot to do, but you can absolutely do this 100%. If you want to have your own business, don't let anybody or anything stand in the way of that. You can absolutely do that. Follow the roadmap and just do one task at a time to help prevent that overwhelm. But what if there was an easier way? Would you take that way? Is it something that you've been looking for? If there was a way to get faster results with fewer headaches, well, I know I'd like fewer headaches and stress in my life. 
a way to help build your confidence. That's just what we were talking about was building confidence. And sometimes people need to almost, I feel people need to borrow confidence from other people sometimes to help get them started. Well, we produced something called Fast Track. Now, I know quite a lot of you already know that we run a business program called Soap Business in a Box. And we've run that for quite a number of years. And we regularly update it and look at what can we do better to help people. And we did a massive audit and we really went through all of the things that we saw people getting stuck on. What was holding them up? Even though we're there guiding them through the program, different people get stuck on different things. So we started going through all the different things that block different people because every one of us is completely different. So you might sail through one thing and think, oh, this is easy. And someone else is like, oh, my God, this is so hard. I don't even know where to start. But then halfway through, you'll get stuck on something else. And, and that other person is like, oh, I've got this. I know what I'm doing. This is fine. So everyone is different. But we looked at all of the things that can stop you or block you from achieving those dreams. And we created solutions for every single one of them. This was a mammoth task and we've by no means stopped. We're gonna continue every time that we see a roadblock or something that holds someone up, we will continue to improve it. So if you don't know how to identify your target market, we do. In the program, we have a simple quiz that helps you discover who your target market is what type of words to use in your marketing, what type of colors work best for that particular audience. All of it is mapped out for you, literally blueprinted. So you know, it tells you, you are this, and this is all of the things that that particular style of brand stands for. What about if you're overwhelmed with what kind of soap to produce or what kind of range to produce? This happens all of the time. People end up making so many different types of soaps and so many different recipes that they get literally paralyzed. How many of you have felt completely paralyzed from moving forward because you've tried 50, 60 different recipes and now you don't know which one's better or which one you should go forward with in your business? I see it happen all of the time. Well, in our program, we cover eight soaps. We don't try and cover 80 soaps. We don't try and cover all of the things. It is eight soaps, which are proven good sellers. And they cover a really good breadth of market, including male and female. And the beauty of those is as we go through the program, we show you how you can actually parcel them up into a signature collection and then a limited edition or speciality range. And also how you can adapt them to completely different markets. The other thing about the program is it comes with the safety assessment, the CPSR for the eight soaps. So you don't have to worry about getting your safety assessment and all of the things it's already done for you. And not only is it done for you, but all of the other paperwork is done for you and all of the files are put together. So you, they are literally ready for you to just drop into your portal when you do the submission. And we even do a live session with you so that we walk you through exactly what you need to do to put them onto the CPSR portal. And Sean is always here with a guiding ear if you get stuck when you're doing it and he'll help you go through it all. But it is literally all done for you. So that headache has gone. What about costing and pricing? Well, it can be tricky, especially at the moment. So we'll look at all of the different costs. And this is a time when I really encourage people to use the private community that we have and start, when you're doing your research, start posting up different places that you found things if you found a supplier that's cheaper on something, post it and share that information. Because the whole benefit of having a community is that you can all benefit from each other. You don't need to be an island. 
the more that you work with people, the further you'll go in your business. So we'll go through how to cost everything, how you price things. I can check for you, go over your numbers and see if your numbers are way off, why they're way off and how you can get those prices back into something that's going to allow you to be more profitable. Is packaging something that really lets you down? It, it's massive for so many people. If you don't have tech skills or you're not a graphic designer, it can be really overwhelming. And hiring a graphic designer, even for one or two labels, can be really, really costly. If you go to a freelance, you can end up with something that you don't like or that you just don't feel fits your brand. And then you've got to start shelling out all over again. So it's a huge thing that holds an awful lot of people back. And I see people trying to do it themselves, but the first few sets of labels that they do are significantly lower level than they need to be if they want to launch a professional brand and really be seen as a quality brand. Well, welcome to our design vault. This is one of the major things that we've been working on for quite some time now. And we have literally curated hundreds of beautiful designs all ready for you to choose from. So you don't have to worry about being a graphic designer. You don't have to worry about whether it's going to fit your target market, whether it's going to look right on your brand. Will a store take it? Will it look professional enough? Is it giftable? All of the brands have been beautifully put together. So in the program, we mentioned that there are eight soaps that are covered. So in this left-hand side, here are four of them. There's the green clay and kelp, the charcoal and tea tree, the goat's milk and the pink clay and rose hip. Now, you don't have to call them those names. You can absolutely change those names, but the labels are all done for all eight soaps in numerous different formats. So all you have to do with these is literally put your logo or your brand name at the top and drop in your company details and you're good to go. Everything is done. And we have designed hundreds of different sets for you. So you could just change the name, drop in your email, boom. If you don't have Pinterest, remove the Pinterest. All of these, all of the graphics that we've been using, I'll show you some more in a second. Everything is fine from a licensing perspective. So all of the graphics that you're seeing here, we've created full sets. So there's tons and tons of sets where we've built mostly groups of eight because there are eight soaps in the program. There are a few of them that are individual ones that you can change um, because they're, they're more um, classic or simplified, but all of these work beautifully together. Now, if you didn't want eight soaps in the collection and you were only doing four, you pick the four that you think work the best. But don't they look pretty together? Can you imagine walking into a store? Any buyer who sees that collection on sale, they can see how that would look in their store. Everything is beautifully matched and it would literally just slot onto a display. It would slot onto a shelf really, really easily. And you don't have to have all eight and all of this is completely changeable when it comes to the text. And what about these? So here we've done the same eight soaps. These are all beautiful hand-drawn watercolors. And this shows you how you can take a theme that you'd probably never have thought of and still create beautiful designs I can see these in gift stores, garden centers, all sorts of different places. And yet they work, the lavender and patchouli, the rose garden, the rose hip and clay, the lemon and poppy, charcoal and tea tree. They've all got the same soaps, but a completely different design. And it will look completely different once your soap's in there, you'll be texturing the tops differently, your brand name will be different. And even if, let's say that three of you all chose the same design, 
it's almost, I, I would say, I can't even imagine the same person seeing the same thing. You're at different parts of the country. You're servicing completely different markets to one another. By the time you've got your logo on there and the other things and your soap on there, and it's on a completely different set of displays, different websites, whatever, it won't look the same at all. You'll be putting your stamp still in there. So don't worry that someone else might have a similar look. This is just one part of your entire brand. Here's tons of other options. So we've got these beautiful little tiny prints. There's a full, I mean, just in the blue, that's the blue, white and coral color, the blush color. And there's a full set of eight just in these tiny ones. There's a full set of eight in these citrus fruits. There's eight of these one to eight in the urban style. So whether you're looking for classic, traditional, urban, industrial, masculine, florals, whether you want citruses, bright colours, pastel colours, every single style has been catered to you. So that's all your labels done and absolutely no headaches. Entire collections ready to literally slot into your store, into your website, onto your market stalls, your farmer's markets, wherever you're going, all done and absolutely no headaches. But that's only one part of all of the things that you've got to do. So what about the other things? There are other graphics that you need in your business too. You need your social media banners if you're gonna be on social media. Well, we've done all of the templates for those for you too. You just need to add pictures or your own image if you want to onto those and you, you're good to go. We've even done social media post templates for you so you can just pop your picture of your soap in and you're good to go again. Posters, flyers, sampler cards, all templated and ready for you to go. But graphics, labels, they're just still one part of the equation. So what else could get you tripped up and halt you from moving forward and developing your business and taking it to a level that you want it to be at? Well, graphics are great, but what about the copy text? Copy is secondary, I would say, to visual, but online it's a second element. Once you've captured their imagination and they're now looking at your products, you want copy text, you want the words, the descriptions to captivate them. So we have produced engaging product descriptions. I think we've done about 10 so far for every single one of the eight soaps, and we'll carry on building that out for you. So you can literally cut and paste it if you want to. But I would rather think of it as a starting point. Look at the way that they've been done and take different elements of them that you like and then tweak them yourself so that it fits with you and your style. You have a distinct style. You have all sorts of good ideas, but sometimes you need somebody to help you get started. And they'll absolutely do that for you. We've got social media post ideas. It can be really, really daunting looking at a screen in the morning thinking, oh God, I've got to write some social media today. I've got to put something up. I've got to feed this machine. Well, having some social media post ideas, having those templates there as well, that's really going to help you get started with that. What about all of the emails that you're going to have to do in your business? When someone orders from you, do you have professional texts that you can send out to people? What about all of the other texts that you're going to need? Your customer service emails, how are you going to engage with them to keep bringing them back? All of those email texts have already been put together and curated for you. So you can either just use them as is, or you can tweak them and add little bits and pieces or mix and match different sentences, whatever you want, but it's a great starting point for you. You're not gonna get stuck and you're not gonna just ignore a huge part of your business because you've already got them there. You've also got 
an entire suite of wholesale emails to help you develop um, wholesale accounts. So from interest all of the way through to orders and then follow ups, engagement posts, all of the different things that you're going to need for wholesale already done for you. So the value of the graphics library and that copy text vault alone is literally thousands of pounds. And I know because I've paid it. <laughs> so I know, I know the value of it, believe me. <laughs> but you get access to all that at no cost at all when you're a member of Soap Business in a Box Business Programme. You get all of the step-by-step -step business program, all of the videos. It takes you through those six core foundations. And in eight weeks, we'll have at least eight live calls. Sometimes I do take it longer. I'm notorious for, I don't like to have a cutoff. I don't believe that things are cookie cuttered. And this might seem quite cookie cuttered right now, but when we go through the business, I try and get you personalizing things. I want to see what it is that's special about you, why you wanted to do this. There's something special in every one of us. We all have a calling and something that the world needs. And I want to help you find what that special thing is and then find a way for you to take that forward. So although we have eight weeks of live calls, it normally ends up going on longer than that. It's entirely up to you whether you don't want to come into all of them, but you will benefit from being in those live calls. And this time we're not having live calls where it's what did you do last week? What are you going to do this week? Everybody is going to have an accountability thread. And I want people to be engaging in that because the more you invest in yourself and you hold yourself accountable, the more you'll actually do things and the more you'll achieve. So there will be an accountability thread that I want you to keep up to date. That tells me where you are, what's getting in your way and how I can help you move forward. Because I can only do so much. This is as close as I can get to building the business for you. But if you're not invested in it and you're not going to put the time in for yourself, I can't make you do that. And there's no point in me doing it. You have to be passionate about it. And this is your dream. I'm here to facilitate what you want to achieve. I can help you get there, but you have to invest your own time and you have to turn up and put the effort in yourself too. And I will go to whatever ends I need to, to help you if you're stuck, but you've got to give too. You also get the safety assessments for all eight of those soaps. You get beautifully created graphics. I mean, they are just gorgeous. I've only given you the tiniest, tiniest snippet. There are so many beautiful designs. All of the professional scripts for your products, descriptions, your email texts, your social media templates, and a private community support group, and loads, loads more as well. If this is something that you know, can really, really help you, you can join today. You can either join on a six month payment program of £300 a month, or you can pay in full for £14.95, which is just over £300 less than the normal fee. Okay, so six payments of £300 or pay in full for £14.95. Now you can 100%, you don't need to do this program. If you're sitting there thinking, oh God, I'm never gonna be able to do that. Doesn't mean that you have to give up on your dreams. You can 100% do this, but be realistic with yourself because I see people who've been wanting this for years and haven't moved forward by doing it on their own. They're still at the beginning or they've done two steps and then things have held them back. How long would it take you for you to do it on your own? And if it took you two years to do it, how much money would you not have made because you hadn't been selling your products in that time? That £1,500, are you wanting to earn more than £1,500 a year from your soap? Because I would really hope that you would. 
And if that is going to be less than what you're earning in two years that it's going to take you to doing it yourself, it makes absolutely no sense to not get the help and support and do it the right way. How much in that time would you spend less on buying the wrong things? One of my big things, I'm always telling people, don't spend any money. When people come into the program, they're like, oh, what? I need to buy such and such. Which should I buy? Absolutely nothing. You can't buy anything yet because you don't know what kind of molds you're going to use. You don't know what kind of packaging you like yet. So how can you possibly order molds? So all of these things come at the right time, at, at the right place. And hopefully I can help you save some money on not buying the wrong things. But a big thing is not just financial. How much less stress would it be for you to have someone helping you, walking you through the things, mentoring you through it and giving you rock solid templates already done to get you started? And this really builds into that confidence thing. How much more confident would you feel knowing that your products look great? You don't have to be a graphic designer. You don't have to be a web designer. You don't have to know all of the tech. What you need is to borrow some confidence and borrow some initial skills to get you started. Because once you actually do get started, that confidence starts growing on its own. You then feel more comfortable and more confident in your own skills. You know what you like and you know where you want to go next. And these aren't forever choices. I can 100% guarantee you that what you do when you launch will be nothing like what you're doing in your business 12 months from then. Almost every single element of your business will change. So you're not making a forever choice you're making a now choice. You're making a choice of something that works and that looks professional to get you started so that you can start building that confidence up, finding your own little niche, your own peculiarities in your business. And it doesn't have to be forever, but it will get you started on the right foot. So are you ready to start your next step to finally take control of your dreams and your passions and build that business that you've probably been thinking about or wanting to do for a long, long time? And for some people, they've already launched their business, but actually most of these steps are not in their business. A lot of them were missing and they've built their business on that quicksand and you may well need to undo some of those things and rebuild again. But I'm here and I'm ready to help you. And honestly, I will be your biggest cheerleader. So if you are ready to make the change, if you want me to help you, I am absolutely here 100% for you. And I want you to have that success and feel that confidence. I know what it's like to have my own business. I've been running soap companies and cosmetic companies now for 30 years. This isn't my first rodeo. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I have built businesses in molds. People told me when I had my own soap business and I, and I made products, people, well, back then, there were only a couple of companies in the world making soap molds. So everybody had exactly the same soap molds. And I didn't want those soap molds. I wanted something different. And people said, you can't, you can't do that. It's not profitable. Well, I went and found all of the things. I learned all of the skills and I built my own mold making business so I could make my own designs, so I could make my own molds. And I didn't just make them for myself. I made them for other people too and for other businesses too. And eventually I ended up selling that business. And when I couldn't find the packaging that I wanted and I couldn't get the bath bomb boxes that I wanted because you're going back an awful long time, probably some of you <laughs> longer than you've been on the planet. <laughs> and they didn't exist. So I started my own packaging company. I went out, I bought a Heidelberg Platten, a big printing press. 
that cut and printed and did all of the things. I had to learn how to use it. I had to get warehousing space. It took time, but I could run 10,000 boxes a day on that machine. I only had to go down there periodically to run different things off. And I had all of the boxes that I needed and I could sell them in my business too. When the last recession happened and foot and mouth happened, I remember when foot and mouth happened, you couldn't go out and sell things. There were no shows and things on. So I started doing cupcake topper molds. I was taking 60,000 a year selling things on eBay. I will make a business happen. I'm determined and I don't let things get in the way. I'm focused and I just literally break every little thing down. And that's exactly what you can do too. You can 100% do this. And I'm sure that some of you have got sadly partners or people in your lives, friends even, who put you down when you talk about having your own business. It's like, well, what makes you think that you're better than me? Nothing, you just have a dream. You are allowed to follow your dreams. Don't let anybody hold you back on what you believe in and what you want to do in life. Life is way too short to be living it for other people. And so if you can't come into the live, you can go on there and do it whenever it suits you. We have people who work nights. We have people who are overseas. We have people who are on vacations. Kids get sick. You get sick. You know, life happens. So it's OK if you can't come into the meetings. We make sure that you've always got access to them. We normally get them up within an hour of the actual meeting. So you're not waiting days and days. Uh, and actually, you've got a library of years um, of previous ones as well, with tons and tons of really, really valuable information that you can go through if you've got lots of spare time. I don't recommend that you do that at first because you should really be focusing your time on specific tasks for that week and moving your business forward in that. And the more things that you watch, if you start watching things from before and before that and before that, you're not moving forward and progressing, you're procrastinating. And what I really want to do is to move you forward. So what I want to do in the live sessions is really get you taking action. So we're going to use them as action sessions rather than you spending an hour with me and then you say, oh, I've got no more time this week. I've got no time to do anything. No, no, no. We're, <laughs> we're going to do the accountability separately. And I know where you're up to. I know what, you know, it's OK if things have got in the way, but how can we get you back on track? And then that week when we go into that call, we're going to be doing things live. So you're going to be actually doing tasks and getting things done, making decisions and actually moving forward. And if you can't do that live, you literally just need to play it and do it as we're actually doing it live. So it will be exactly the same for you. Da -da, da -da -da. Jackie says she's been on Soap Business in a Box and loved it. And I do keep you on your toes. I do. I do because I know that the people who join the programme really, really do want to succeed. They want to run a business they just need someone to guide them they need someone who believes in them they need to borrow some of that confidence brilliant okay well thank you very very much for joining me it has been wonderful being with you uh, if you're just starting out and soap business in a box isn't right for you at this time don't worry it's okay i know this program is not for everybody but I designed it and added all of these wonderful things in there so it really can help those people who know it's for them. And if that's not you, that's fine. Absolutely fine. I can't wait to see you again with me really, really soon, guys. And thank you so much for spending some time with me this evening. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.